Now, I don't know how many of you had your uh, beach experience ruined by a particular movie. <laughs> and at this point, I don't know about you, but anytime, anytime I'm in the... Now, I surf for years, but anytime I'm in the ocean and everybody disappears, I don't know if that's happened to you lately, you go out deeper, 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 and then all the people ride their boards in and you're out by yourself. And all of a sudden, I start hearing in my head, da 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 And then, if, if I have a foot in the water, the chance of a piece of seaweed rubbing across my foot or a fish bumping my foot is about 100%, and I scream like a little girl, which is not the coolest surf environment because you can't recover from that. You can't go, dude, right after it. It doesn't work. And that's all about not knowing what's next and freaking out ahead of time. Does that sound familiar? You can trust your future, your fearful future, to a faithful father. Now, there's healthy and unhealthy fear. You know, there's a healthy fear. Some of you need that, okay? But an unhealthy fear is where we fear things that will never happen. Today, we're going to talk about Matthew 6, 25 to 34, and we're going to look at worry. And my mom was not supposed to have children. She was told, you will not have children. Even years later, when the doctors looked back, they should have said, you should have never had children. Some people who've met me say to my mother, you should have never had children. Oh, that's just mean, isn't it? But, but the truth is, my mom was not supposed to have children. She adopted my older brother and my older sister. And, and you went to school with my sister. And uh, uh, she adopted them. And then, all of a sudden, my sister Kelly, boom, there it is. She's born, so my mom thought, well, this is good, three kids. And then a few years later, surprise, there was Eric. And after I was born, they immediately said, we got to replace this one. And my brother was born 14 months later. And so, and so five children in a home that shouldn't have had anyone. And I will tell you a few stories about my mom today, because in the middle of all of this, my mother trusted a fearful future to a faithful father over and over and over again. And just so you know, she won't tell you. She's probably watching, but she's not perfect. <laughs> but she's faithful. And she's a great example of a faithful woman who just did what God called her to do. So here's the first thing we fear. We fear not having value. Now, this is a fake Euro. I didn't even, this is how real this looks. I didn't even realize it was fake until Dave came and said, it says fake specimen right there. And the back has nothing on it, Eric. That's fake. So apparently I got a stack of euros one time when we were somewhere and they gave me a fake one on the top and I kept it thinking it was real. So if you'd like a fake euro after the, no, I'm just kidding. So, so here's the thing. How much is something worth? It's worth what someone tells you it's worth. That's why Bitcoin, we have no idea what it's worth. And everybody says, well, there's nothing backing it. <clears throat> there's nothing backing it. We used to, our dollars used to have something back. You know, they don't, you know what a dollar's worth? What we say a dollar's worth. Why? Because somebody told us it's worth that. And you need that many dollars to buy gasoline. And it's a lot more than it used to be, isn't it? Right? Because somebody said, you need more of those to buy this. How in the world does that happen? Hey, we're ready? Some of you, maybe because you don't have kids, maybe because you've lost someone you love, or maybe because you find your value in the wrong things, you don't think you have value. Listen to what this verse says, Matthew 6, starting in verse 25. Therefore, it's Jesus talking, I tell you, do not worry. Now, this word for worry, you need to understand, just so you know, it's not a, a word for planning. It's not a word for, you know, making sure that you take care of what's next. It's not, it doesn't mean don't board up for hurricanes. Okay? It doesn't mean don't buckle your seatbelt. All right? It, I, therefore, I tell you, do not worry. And this is the idea of having anxiety, and you just keep dwelling on something. You ever had that happen? Right? By the way, I got to see John Williams live this year. Every song sounded like Jaws and E.T. And Indiana Jones. 
Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. Yet, your heavenly Father feeds them. And then he says this. Listen, you need to, you need to listen to this sentence. You probably skip this every time you've read this. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? We live in a society that's devaluing people more and more and more. We think we're adding value by saying, do whatever you want. It doesn't matter. If you feel like doing something, do it. And what we don't realize is, because they don't have a standard of anything, they've lost what is my value. And so when you say self-esteem to them, they think, well, what do I base that on? And so just this week, I don't know if you saw it, it was awful. A college cheerleader took her life and wrote a note before she died. And as I read that note, one very particular part stood out to me. She said this, I always dreamed of becoming so many things that I am today, but they just aren't enough. I'm not enough. I have not felt enough for a while. Listen, you're enough. Not because you're good enough or smart enough. She also talked a lot about pleasing people. Can I tell you that if you spend your life trying to please people, they are going to, will, absolutely let you down. We went and saw Petra the other night. I remember them being in front of thousands and thousands and thousands of people at the castle. And the other night, they couldn't fill a small room. And I thought, oh, if you based your life on your value being by people pleasing people, at some point, it's outdated. At some point, what used to make you popular isn't popular anymore. The shirt you wear as you get older, unless your wife buys you a new one, guess what? You're the old man on the beach. With the metal detector, that's you. With the weird hat, right? <laughs> One of the wives looked at her husband just now and grabbed him like, yeah, that's you, honey. Okay, I thought that was great. Listen to what it says in Hebrews 13. Keep your lives free from the love of money, listen, listen, and be content with what you have. Because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can, I love this, mere mortals. Doesn't that sound like something from a superhero movie? What can mere mortals do to me? I'm a superhero. Why? Because of the cross. In Revelation, it talks about how Jesus paid the ultimate price for you. Why? It's the idea, it's almost this picture of Satan bidding on you and saying, I'll give you this much for them. And Jesus said, I give everything. All the chips are in. So your value, the value you have is not based on whether everybody likes you. It's not based on your occupation. It's not based on your looks. Thank God for that here. You know, right? It's not based on whether you can stay skinny or not. Before, after, before, after, right? Right? It's not based on whether you have children or not. It's not based on what you do. It's based on who sets your value. You are enough. You are enough. Because of Jesus, you're a superhero. Mere mortals can't do anything to you. Whether you make them happy or sad, they can't bother you. If you're a mom and your kids are not talking to you today, mere mortals don't matter because he absolutely loves you and he sets the value for you. Next time you go in the mirror, I want you to look in the mirror and say, I'm enough. Instead of saying, ooh, what about, oh, oh, where'd my hair go? What? Gray? Where'd... Every time I get in the barber chair now, I'm like, those colors are changing every day. You can trust your fearful future to a faithful father. Let me ask you this question. Am I finding my value in things, people pleasing, whatever, or in God's value? Do you really understand what your value? He sets the value. 
Only God himself fully appreciates the influence of a Christian mother in molding of the character in her children. By the way, if you missed the opening video today, it's by Skit Guys and you need to watch it. It's absolutely accurate. Amen. Number two, we fear being needy. We fear being needed. How many of you ever watch one of those hoarder shows? Anybody ever seen those hoarder shows? It makes you feel so good about your house, doesn't it? And then you go and throw a few things away just so you feel better, right? So I have had this record since 1982. You were what? Four? Four years old. So back in the old days, we had records only. But what was cool about them is you had a sleeve and you could read all the words to the songs. You realize that children now say, Alexa, play whatever. They don't even have to listen on the radio with a tape player and hope that the DJ doesn't talk over their beginning of their song. Because then you hear the DJ every time you hear that song. Hey, right here on 91.5, we're going to play Casey and the Sunshine Band with Sure Enough. Show sure Enough. You ever hang on to stuff? One of the things about hoarders is they're afraid they're going to need something, so they hang on to it. The difference between pickers and hoarders is very simple. The pickers save more expensive things. They're the same people. Watch the show Pickers and think if that stuff wasn't worth anything, then you would think those people are crazy too. And the truth is we hold on to random things. And some, By the way, I got all the band to sign it. That was really kind of cool. 40-year-old record. But we hang on to stuff. I don't know if you heard about the guy, uh, the lady this week who went to uh, uh, Goodwill to buy. Uh, she bought this little head and paid, what did you say, 35 bucks? 35 bucks to buy the head. To which Denise said, who spends 35 bucks at Goodwill? She bought this head and took it home. They found out it was an actual head of a Roman statue from the first century. Holy moly. There's a guy in, in 2013, he was a, a European that lives here now, and he lives, I think, in Massachusetts, and he got rid of a hard drive, the wrong hard drive, and on that, he had, i got to look it up because I can't remember the number, $280 million worth of Bitcoin that he can't get unless he gets that hard drive back. So he has gone to them and said, I need to dig through your dump, and they said, nay, nay. He said, I'll pay for it. I'll bring people in. We'll have things. They said, nope. $280 million, gone. If you're always worried about being needy, you're always going to feel needy no matter what you have, no matter how much you have, no matter how many plastic bags and egg crates you collect, you will feel needy. No matter how many VCR tapes you still have at your house, Time to digitize a few of those people. Jesus continues, Matthew 6, 28. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They don't labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that's how the God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? By the way, not a lot of us have trouble with that. And I've always said at our church, we will feed anybody regardless of their habit. We'll make sure we get them to food. We may not help them with other things because they have a habit that's keeping them from growing. But we want to make sure people aren't hungry. If the pastor can be fat, people can be fed. Right? So, so, so here we continue. Apparently I have weight on my head this morning. What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. And so we pray the Lord's Prayer. Give us this year our daily bread, right? Isn't that how it goes, Dave? Give us this year. Give us this month our daily bread. Give us this week our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Too often we're so busy pulling stuff in that we don't need or don't want. And have you ever looked in your closet and you realize some of my clothes are outdated and I should have given them away a long time ago? I should have given those shoes away. They've now gone bad. Now nobody wants them, right? Why? Because we're holding on to stuff because we feel needy. That's going to fill our 
need. Luke 12, 32, Jesus says this, and I love it. Do not be afraid, little flock. Why? For the Father has chosen, and I love this translation, the New American Standard, has chosen gladly to give you the kingdom. So when you feel needy and you feel like you got to hang on to everything and that enough is never enough, understand that God has chosen gladly to give you the kingdom. He wants to bless you. Years ago, when Kyle was little, we got down to the end of a month with not enough money. I don't know if you've ever done that. And it was so bad that one day we realized we are out of toilet paper. And I remember thinking, okay, three more days. Three, how in the world can we go through more? And I remember it says, you have not because you ask not. So I thought, I'm going to pray the dumbest prayer I've ever prayed. Lord Jesus, I need TP. Provide TP. I promise you this happened. The students who were part of this will tell you that this happened. At night, middle of the night, I hear noise in my front yard. A bunch of teenagers that I was in charge of their small group came to roll my house. They were loud and obnoxious. I think it was like angels were shaking the cans in the front yard so I would know they were there. I came walking out and went, hey, these kids ran and threw packs of toilet paper. I mean, in the bag still. They were really unprepared. And I'm not talking, I'm not talking that cheap junk. I'm talking the best toilet paper, the kind that stops up all your toilets. That was the kind of toilet paper they left on the lawn and, and, and ran away. And I remember bringing, literally, we had rolls for months of this awesome toilet paper. It was kind of sad after that, to be honest. What a silly prayer to pray. And yet God knows what you, listen, need before you ask. Now, if we're honest, sometimes what we pray is what we want. Like when I prayed that Jesus would turn the air conditioner back on here last night, it was already, it was 74 degrees. I was dying. Right? You hear me? So sometimes we pray for what we want, but the truth is he knows what we need. And you can't always get what you want. I've heard that somewhere. <laughs> Am I cooperating with God to supply my needs? Now, it doesn't mean you can just pray and ask God to do something. You have to cooperate with him. So you can't sit at home and say, God, provide for my needs. And he says, go get a job. You can't, you can't stay on your couch and say, God, provide for my needs. And he says, hey, maybe go and ask somebody to help you. You have to cooperate with what God is doing. Remember, you can trust a fearful future to a faithful father. Number three, pursue his kingdom and righteousness. Do you remember this? When I show kids this, they think it's just a really small phone. Little did they know, let me tell you what this used to do. Music. And you could see the album cover in the little screen. Ooh, and I think this one would hold like 300 songs. Ooh, and we would listen to it all day. And what we listened to began to affect how we were. I remember years ago, I worked at a, at a, at a place where I worked in the shop. And at the shop, they had talk radio on, and I had never listened to talk radio. And as I was working in the shop day after day, I started getting worried about the world. And I started getting worried about America, and America was going to fall because Bill Clinton was in the White House. And, oh, my goodness, that tells you how long ago. Bill Clinton was a president, and he, okay. So, so that tells you how long ago it was. And I started kind of, and I started worrying about everything because this talk show host told me the world is falling apart. Everything's falling apart. And I, oh, the world's falling apart. Da, da. And I would go home stressed out and freaked out. And I found myself anxious and frustrated and irritated because all day I was hearing this person spout all this fear and anger. And I was taking it in. And I started seeking first my kingdom and my righteousness, right? What's right? And you know what I did? I went out and I don't even have one of these. I went out and got a tape player. It's like this big. And I put it on my belt and I put brand new batteries in it so it would last a whole day. And I put a tape in and I put my headphones on. And you know what happened? I wasn't worried anymore. I wasn't freaked out about everything that was going on in Washington that I didn't hear about. And I didn't know. And guess what? Nothing changed. 
except I was playing Christian music. I was seeking his kingdom instead of allowing other things. Be careful what you take into your mind and your ear. And I'm not saying talk radio is wrong. I'm not saying TV is wrong. You just need to be careful of what you ingest all the time. It's a good to know what's going on in the world. I'm not telling you not to know. You really should watch the news once in a while and be like, there's a hurricane. Is it a three or a four? Because if a four, I'm out of here. If it's a three, I'm having a party. So which one is it, right? <laughs> it's okay to pay attention. Thought I'd tag along with your thing. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Therefore, Hebrews 12. By the way, I, I picked this one for Mother's Day on purpose. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. The beginning of this passage starts out surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. This description that's happening in this chapter is a description of heaven. And it's a description of the people who've gone before us. The moms and grandmothers and great grandmothers who are part of the great cloud of witnesses. The theater that looks from heaven and looks at you and looks at me and says, go, you can do it. And the author says, hey... Quit allowing all this junk in your life, all this other stuff that, that's weighing you down and freaking you out and making your life miserable. Throw that aside. Why? Because all these people are cheering for you to get your eyes off of you and get them on Christ. Many of you right now have somebody in heaven cheering for you. Maybe it's a mom or a grandmother or a great-grandmother who right now is going, come on, I know it seems like that's a big deal, but from my perspective, that's not a big deal. They're cheering you on. They're cheering for you today. You may be discouraged and depressed, but they're not. They're saying, what are you worried about me for? Go! Drop all that junk and go. Matthew 6, Jesus continues Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. <laughs> Deal with the shark in front of you. Don't worry about the one that hadn't caught your foot yet. That's tomorrow. You can trust your fearful future to a faithful father. I want to have one more question that I'm going to read you a story. Tell you a story. Am I pursuing other things before God's kingdom? So when I was pre-born. Six months. My mom was pregnant. Six months pregnant. She would go every Christmas to the migrant farms in Miami and Homestead. And she would take presents. And if you don't know my mom's story, my mom never, she had one Christmas with a tree her whole childhood. So Christmas is very special to her. It's very important. She wants to, she always wanted to share with people who have needs at Christmas. So she called this home that worked with the migrant families down in Homestead. And she said, how many kids do you have? And they said, we have about 15 older kids if you could bring them presents. So my mom said, I didn't just bring 15, I brought some extras. So I probably had about 20 presents. And six months pregnant, I drove down to Homestead. And I showed up and 15 kids came in. And I was so excited. I had pre-wrapped the presents for these older kids. They said they were all older kids. She said, I was so ready. 15 kids came in. And then 50 kids came in. And then over a hundred kids came in, packed the place. And my mom said she did what any six-month pregnant woman would do. And she began to cry. And she said to the director, is anybody else coming? The director said, no. We're going to have to figure something out. All of a sudden, she said she never knew who these people were. But all of a sudden, two people showed up and brought two boxes of presents. And she said, well, at least we have some more. And then she said, she said, Eric, make sure you tell this. Last night she said, you missed one part. She said, 
This next group of people I never heard from, the director didn't know they were coming, and I never saw them ever again. So, of course, I imagine in heaven, Jesus was like, hey, Brookings doesn't have enough presents, can you help her out? And all of a sudden, these people walked in with box after box after box and had enough presents for every child. One particular child was a little girl. My mom was worried about her. She was three or four years old. And my mom thought, I've got presents for 14-year-olds. There's a big difference. And they just drew the presents out of the boxes. They were wrapped, but they drew them out and just opened them. So she didn't know who was getting what. She said she watched as that little girl reached into a box. And my mom said, I don't know what she's going to get. And it was a doll. Exactly what she wanted. And she watched the little girl react in joy as she opened that present. Listen. You can trust a fearful future to a faithful father. He knows what you need. You have value. You are important. You are enough. Not because of you, but because of what he did for you. You don't have to hang on to everything you own. He'll take care of you. Ask him what he wants you to give. Ask him how he wants you to help. And then seek first his kingdom. And he'll bless you. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you can do that today. The first step to really walking in his kingdom is to say, Jesus, I surrender everything to you. I like doing things my way. But you're so much better than I am. I surrender everything to you. And the Bible says when you make him Lord... When you put him in charge of your life, that he, because of his death and resurrection, he replaces your sin, your messed upness with his righteousness. And if you want to do that today, I'd love to talk to you after the service or you can email me. We're going to do, release our butterflies outside in just a minute. But before we do that, I want to pray. We're going to have a closing song. We're going to give away some chocolate. But most of all, I want to pray a prayer of blessing on you. So would you join me as we pray? Father, I pray for that one who walked in this morning feeling less than. Lord, that one who didn't recognize their value. That one who's worried about tomorrow. Father, I pray right now they would know that you are faithful and you will take care of them. Lord, I pray even now for those who are hurting, those who today is very difficult for, the folks who are in the hospital dealing with loss and hurt and pain and others who are just today struggling. Lord, would you bless them right now with your presence? Help them to know how valuable they are and loved they are. Lord, we love you. We pray your love would flow over everyone here today. In Jesus' name, amen.